Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's devotional. Our thought today is going to come from an article. Um, U.S. Senator J.D. Vance sounds alarm over free speech erosion as Ireland seeks to legislate expression of thought. And I'm sorry for the black bar at the bottom. I, there's nothing I can do to take it off when uh, I have the the uh, the box like this. Uh, otherwise, it would look like that. So, <laughs> um, which actually, that's not too bad. We'll do it that way. That's fine. Okay, so. Um, it says, Vance's letter comes after Irish lawmakers said we're restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. So notice uh, some of the statements here uh, that are being made. Um, and, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to leave the politics aspect out of it, but I want to focus on the substance of this. So J.D. Vance raised questions for lawmakers in Ireland who are proposing a bill that could jail citizens for merely possessing material that criticizes certain protected characteristics like gender or national origin. Dubbed the Criminal Justice Bill 2022, uh, the proposed legislation is intended to target hate speech, though critics have compared it to the concept of punishing people for thought crime. Uh, the text of the Criminal Justice Bill notes that a person can be imprisoned if they prepare or possess material that is likely to incite violence or hatred against a person or a group of persons on account of their protected characteristics or any of those characteristics with a view to the material being communicated to the public or a section of the public, whether by himself or herself or another person. Now, I, I just want you to notice how vague that is. That's a very, very vague statement. And as far as I know, it doesn't get any more specific. The bill includes a variety of protected characteristics that one can be persecuted or prosecuted for, uh, for criticizing, including race, color, nationality, religion, national or ethnic origin, descent, gender, sex characteristics, sexual orientation, or disability. And J.D. Vance, he addressed this, this letter to express concern. He says, I write to express concern about legislation pending in the Irish Parliament that could undermine Ireland's commitment to universally priced freedoms, including the freedom of speech. Uh, given that President de, Va de Valera himself was imprisoned for sedition in 1918, I urge your government to consider the impact of this legislation on Ireland's proud tradition of free speech. He continued by saying the law criminalizes those in public who behave in a way that could incite hatred against a person or group of people because of their protected characteristics. What on earth does that mean? Vance asked the Irish representative. Would the prohibition include recklessly attributing social ills, like crime, to increased immigration to Ireland? Would it include recklessly affirming that gender is biologically determined and that there are only two genders, male and female? Vance told Nason that the bill would rob Ireland of the public discourse of all democracies need if self citizens self-censor to protect themselves from prosecution, adding that the law is vague, and, and it is. Um, Ireland Senator Pauline O'Reilly spoke to the, whatever that is, uh, oh, that's the, um, the British or the Irish Parliament, the, the Irene, Iran or whatever, where she claimed the law protects people from discomfort associated with views about their identities. I want you to notice that. It protects people from discomfort, which quantify discomfort. Okay, can you can you can you can you quantify can you define what that means or is it subjective? Vance said the US condemns similar consensus uh, censorious conduct from China, Myanmar, Iran, explaining the US imposed visa restrictions because these countries were doing similar things. I'm alarmed that one of our closest friends, a democracy dedicated to upholding cherished freedom, should undertake such legislation. Uh, he then presented some questions to the UN representative. Um, she advocated, uh, or earlier this month, O'Reilly, the, the, the Irish representative, she was criticized after she advocated for the bill that would restrict free speech. Uh, Vance asked if it would be applicable to foreign visitors. Uh, what about government officials, that sort of thing. Final question Vance posed was if the bill does become law, what steps will Nason take to ensure Ireland's, Ireland's departure from fundamental values of democracy like freedom of expression does not damage its relationship with the U.S.? Uh, she says, in defense of the bill, she spoke at the House of that in June saying, we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. You will see throughout our constitution, yes, you have rights, but they are restricted for the common good. If your views on other people's identities go to make their lives unsafe, insecure, or cause them such deep discomfort that they cannot live in peace, then I believe it is our job as legislators to restrict those freedoms 
for the common good. And that's the end of the article. So there's either freedoms are freedom and freedoms are unrestricted. Otherwise, if they are restricted, that means they're not freedoms, they're privileges. And if they're privileges, that means that governments have the power to restrict those privileges as it sees fit. And that's one of the crucial key components here is that what we're talking about are freedoms versus privileges. And, and they're conflating freedoms, which they profess to, to believe in, or at least should believe in, or we would feel that they would believe in, we believe in, uh, and they're making them privileges. And that's a, certainly a concern in our country as well. But th this is a very a strange statement. We're restricting freedom, but for the common good. <laughs> It just seems, it seems like a contradictory statement. I mean, the common good would be more freedom, not less. But having said that, my concern would be if I'm in Ireland and I'm a Christian, okay, is the, remember we talked about the vagueness of the statement that any person can be imprisoned if they prepare or possess material that is likely to incite violence or hatred. Well, and, and again, remember uh, Miss O'Reilly, she broadens that out to cause discomfort as well. Where does the Bible fall into that? If the Bible is protected, what about sermon notes? What about a preacher with sermon notes? Or, or for that matter, a member of a congregation caring about sermon notes from their sermon on Sunday, or class notes for that matter, possessing material that describes perhaps the sin of homosexuality, uh, or truth about transgenderism, or, or God created male and female, and that's it. Uh, elements that could be per perceived or, or interpreted as being hatred, which again, that's a, that's a, uh, again, that's a very loose term nowadays, okay? Hatred, nobody, I was going to say nobody, no one I know as a Christian would ever say that they hate homosexual people or that they hate transgender people or that God hates homosexual transgender people. I don't believe that. I don't hate anyone who is transgender, homosexual, uh, involved in fornication or adultery, involved in stealing or anything like that. I don't hate them. God doesn't hate them. In fact, he sent his only beloved son to die for them and for me. So I don't believe in promoting hatred as defined by the dictionary. However, our society has gotten to a point where it's using hatred as anything that is critical of a lifestyle. If you in any way criticize or suggest that what they're doing is not acceptable or what they're doing is problematic even, that's hatred to them. Okay, never mind the fact that, that transphobic, that term gets toss, tossed around or homophobic gets tossed around all the time as being fearful of. Okay, that's what the term means. Phobic means I'm afraid. I have a phobia of. I don't have a phobia of transgender or, or homosexual people. Just no, not any different than, than people who are involved in fornication or adultery or anything else. Okay, sin is sin, and it doesn't make any difference what it is. And that's true for me, again, looking at myself first, but also to others. So, yet transphobic gets used and, and homophobic gets used to describe anyone who's even the least bit critical or least bit uh, suggestive of uh, that it's sinful. That's transphobic. So people don't follow their own definition or follow the definitions the way they should. Be more precise when you talk about stuff like that. But this, things in Europe have a tendency to start spreading, and we've already seen it in Canada. Uh, it starts to spread to the U.S. as well. And more and more we're seeing vague things like this. And again, I don't know anything, any backstory or anything else about have they... Have they excluded uh, religious speech? Have they excluded preachers preaching God's word? Have they excluded uh, 
church-going people from holding a Bible or holding notes about the Bible or from having a bulletin article that talks about these things or having a tract that they hand out to people. You know, we have tracts that people used to hand out. Uh, where does this line get drawn? And this goes back to me. It, it goes back to kind of bringing in some scripture here to what Jesus says on the sermon at the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus speaks regarding the Beatitudes, and again, this is this is Sermon on the Mount, and it's going to go all the way through chapter 7. <coughs> Excuse me. But he says, um, Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now notice all of these, Jesus goes, blessed, 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 you know, different aspects, different elements. He gets to the concept of persecution. He actually spends a little bit more time on that. He says, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus spends three verses of the, 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 the last of the Beatitudes. He spends three verses of, or three verses as, as we've assigned verses. Jesus didn't speak in verses. Uh, Matthew didn't, didn't write them down as verse 10, verse 11, verse 12. But, but he spends these three statements talking about being persecuted and the willingness that we have to have even in the face of government passing legislation in the name of protection of other people that restricts freedoms that we all hold dear such as freedom of speech freedom of religion uh, freedom to, to, to worship and practice the way we see fit and also to speak god's word this is part of the reason why that particular law and for that matter that thought process that we have to regulate or, or legislate uh, people's comfort <laughs> again remember i mentioned remember that uh, uncomfort uh, or discomfort i should say making people uncomfortable well that's very subjective and and why should they get to be protected from their discomfort but i'm not protected from my discomfort because it should be uncomfortable for Christians to be made not be able or, or to be told not to be able to speak in the name of the Lord, to not speak the gospel. That should be uncomfortable for us. So why is their discomfort more protected than or their comfort more protected than mine? We're living in a society where people don't have the mental fortitude, the, the, the mental strength to deal with people who disagree with them. Somebody disagrees with you and it's ideological automatically. It doesn't matter what it is, you're ideologically opposed to me. And and it's almost, to them, it's existential. It's an, You're an existential threat to me. Why? Because I believe something different than you? Because I'm, I'm speaking from God's word. I have a reason for what I believe. I believe what God's word says. Now, you can disagree with God all you want to. You're not going to get anywhere with it. But you can disagree with God all you want. But just because I take God's word and apply it to my life and seek to live like it doesn't mean I'm always perfect in it. But I seek to be. Why am I an existential threat? And, and this is what we're facing. And, and it's unfortunate that more and more of our society is going down this path as opposed to loosening restrictions on what should be freedoms, but are becoming privileges uh, and seeking to, to create a society that is respectful of one another, even when we disagree, rather than pushing that, instead we're, seeming to push more division and either you agree with us completely or you're against us that's the bottom line either you agree with everything we're telling you everything we're pushing or you're against us and we're going to seek to punish you for it and as christians we have to be prepared for that we have to be ready to stand for the truth and to do what's right no matter what government may say what our society may say all right I read that article a couple of days ago, and I just thought that that is very, very dangerous from a from an American values perspective, but even more so from a Christian perspective. Not that it would change what we do or how we, what we practice or what we teach or to whom we teach or when we teach, but 
we have to be prepared for that kind of mindset. All right, everybody. Lord willing, our next devotion will be tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, just a note, and I'll mention this again tomorrow, next week, uh, because of of people getting out, kids getting out of school and, and the kind of the holiday season ramping up, we're only going to have devotionals on Monday and Tuesday next week. We will not have devotionals on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we're going to be packing and getting ready because we're actually going to be heading out of town. So uh, just Monday and Tuesday next week. Uh, for our devotionals, but uh, the next one will be tomorrow. Hope to see you then. All then. Thank you, everybody.